This city just epitomizes so much of what I always imagined Europe to be like. Um. in the small harbor of Strasbourg with a vague feeling of excitement, but very few expectations. Strasbourg, while at least in my small town Canadian upbringing, it wasn't really a city I had heard much about. The European giants of Venice and Amsterdam and Paris stole my imagination as a child dreaming of faraway places, but Strasbourg was rarely on the list. And yet, it's a busy and vital city, a UNESCO World Heritage Site and home of the European Parliament, a place which has been constantly fought over and which now holds a culture distinctly its own. We ended up staying in Strasbourg for far longer than we initially planned, because magical things just kept happening. From jazz musicians in a darkened park, to an ancient astronomical clock, to the glimmer of lights in the River Il. This is Strasbourg. I'm Maya, and this is Aladino. In mid-November, we converted our 28-foot sailboat into a riverboat, and we started going north, from the Mediterranean all the way to the North Sea. In front of us, we had 2,000 kilometers and 200 locks. Join us as we navigate river currents, discover incredible places, cruise through canals, wait out a global pandemic in the heart of France, and record the whole voyage with a new episode every Friday. This is North Through the Continent. We're going north through the continent. Strasbourg is located on the River Rhine, which is of course why we stopped here on our journey along the Rhine. But although the Rhine brings freight to and from the city, it's not really a main feature of Strasbourg. The old part of the city is actually built on an island in the River Il, a smaller river which isn't navigable for our boat. We docked Magic Carpet at a peaceful harbour about a 30 minute walk from the old town, and then meandered along to see what would find. After a short stroll around the city, Luca sadly had to leave us and return to Zurich, but we felt like there was a lot more we wanted to see here, so we decided we had to stay longer and get to know Strasbourg. Good morning from Strasbourg! It is a hot one today. It is about 9.30 and I just walked to the grocery store and it's already so hot, but we have a full day planned. There was a lot we wanted to see. The European Parliament, the Old Town, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and the Strasbourg Cathedral, an ornate and awe-inspiring building that houses an ancient astronomical clock. We had a big day in front of us. So this park is right next to the harbor, and in order to go into town, we have to walk through it. And it's really beautiful. It's one of those old European parks, and everybody comes, especially in the evening, to sit around and socialize, and um, there's exercise groups here. There's people practicing music here, I've noticed a few times, because everyone lives in such small apartments that you can't like make a lot of noise in your apartment, so the parks become that space. So it's really lovely. So this is our, our daily walk. We walked by this uh, piece of art right here and we try to appreciate and understand it. And uh, here's the explanation that I could come up with. It was an egg at first. Of course, the shell is now broken and open and uh, the creature emerged out of it. But by seeing the shoe right here, I think it is a bit of an introverted person because it is in itself upside down. The head is somewhere within and only the shoe is showing. But yet, it has still created a few things in life. Whatever they might be, it was an inventor type 
a shy creator, not sure of himself, still within himself, but yet he has tried things which are a bit irrecognizable though, but <laughs> yet. But I think he is still in search of himself. <laughs> Very good. Our first stop was the European Parliament. It's here that members from all the European nations gather to discuss new laws and policies. It's an incredibly unique parliament. 24 languages are spoken, so translators are a huge part of the proceedings. Normally it's possible to take a tour inside, but it was closed on Sunday so we just wandered around outside. So here it is I guess. Um, yeah, I, it's a little bit different from what I expected. I sort of imagined it to be more of a downtownish area, and this seems sort of more on the outskirts, but we'll go check it out. So this, I believe, is actually a continuation of the Canal du Rhône au Rhin, the Rhine Rhone Canal, which we took from the end of the Sound, basically up to the Rhine. We could have actually gone farther in this canal, but we opted to take the Rhine because it's much, much faster. For sure this is more picturesque, but uh, we're kind of in the get to the sea mode at the moment. So anyway, we would have gone right past the European Parliament had we gone this route. Shoot. We felt like a visit to Strasbourg wasn't complete without at least acknowledging the important role it plays in European politics, and it seems fitting that Strasbourg would be the meeting place considering its history of shifting between Germany and France, two of the largest nations in the EU, and now settling into its own unique identity which blends the two. So we got back on the tram, back to the gorgeous ancient roads of Strasbourg. All right, here we are now entering Centre-Ville. This is the nice old historic part of town and we've walked around here a little bit before. But I think we're gonna have a nice lunch today. It's really, really a beautiful city in the center part. So I'm excited to show you. Maya is getting grumpy from the awful job of filming all day and she hasn't eaten a thing yet. I'm hungry. You're hungry. But look at this pretty building, isn't it worth filming? No. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, let's go see if it has spätzle in it. <laughs> no, but for real, let's go for lunch. Don't it's act, almost two o'clock. Don't try to act cute now that the two. camera is here. <laughs> I was getting very hungry, but there were just so many pretty things to point the camera at. Fortunately, we eventually found a place that struck a nice balance between being pretty enough to film, but which also served food. Prime spot! Are you happy? I'm so happy. This is, it's so busy in this restaurant and we had to wait for about 10 minutes to get in. But it's such a lovely area that we decided to wait, but we really didn't think we'd get canal side, so I'm very pleased. Strasbourg sits in the Alsace region, which is right on the border with Germany. And although Strasbourg is part of France, it didn't always used to be that way. This region has been fought over for many, many years uh, between France and Germany. And that is quite apparent in many things in Strasbourg. You can see it especially in the architecture, 
you know, there's like the French shutters, uh, but then there's the German style buildings with like the wooden supports in it. Um, the, the cuisine here is also quite mixed. So although this place isn't like very traditional, um, one thing which is traditional to this region is tarte flambe, which is the French word for it, or flammkuchen, which is the German word for it. It's basically like a really thin pizza with um, instead of tomato Not sauce. Not a pizza! Well, <laughs> it's a similar idea. It's a thin crust with some cream, usually cream onions and, bacon. and bacon and onion. It's like a very German kind of idea. Um, yeah, but I mean right now I just ordered a burger. Aladino ordered spatzli, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that's one another thing. I mean, we're in France, but we ordered spatzli, which is a very German uh, dish. So there's a lot of different influences. I'm told that the dialect spoken here is also a little bit of a mix between the two, but I'm, I don't know enough about it to really be able to hear it or define what it is. So yeah, that's Strasbourg. a burger with blue cheese on it which I'm very excited about I love the blue cheese in France and then Aladino you got some spatzli but it looks like they tried to make it a little bit Italian so there's tomato of sauce course. on it where would you get without Italian <laughs> spatzli with tomato sauce basil and parmesan <laughs> bon appetito bon Strasbourg is at a crossroads, not only between the Rhine and the Ile rivers, but also between France and Germany. It's its own culture, Alsatian, a blend of customs and traditions with its own unique spin. The city's covered bridges defense system having outlived its usefulness, military engineer Jacques Tarade directed the building of the dam based on a design drawn up by Vauban. Started in 1685 and completed in 1700, the dam could be opened to flood the southern front to make it inaccessible to any attackers. Three of the 13 arches of the dam were raised in 1784 to allow seasonal floodwaters to flow out and boats to sail through. The dam has had many changes made to it over the years and it is today used by pedestrians for crossing the river. These look like original parts of the cathedral. Oh, when it was I was wondering why these are all here. That could definitely make sense. What's her sound is that? And we saved the best for last. The Strasbourg Cathedral is an extremely impressive sight. Victor Hugo called it a prodigy of the gigantic and the delicate. It towers above the city, but the ornate layers of stone and stained glass decorate it almost like lace. It's an excellently preserved historic landmark in the city, but it took a lot of work to get here.
Strasbourg was taken by the Germans in World War II, and the cathedral was hit by British and American bombs. Restoration efforts were only completed in the 1990s. also houses an astronomical clock, which shows the position of the moon and the stars, the days of the week, a parade of animated figures which apparently make an appearance every day at 12.30, and many other novelties. All the calculations to keep the clock working are stored in the complex series of gears and mechanisms, which are also on display. My favorite memory of Strasbourg was still yet to be made. For as the day faded from the sky, we returned to Magic Carpet. I stopped in the park near the harbor to call a friend, and as I was meandering around on the phone, I heard the sweet sound of music drifting over to me. A band of jazz musicians were practicing in the park, and they were playing the music of Django Reinhardt, a style which I claim as one of my favorites. So, naturally, I invited them over to Magic Carpet, and that's where the magic really began.
I've long wanted to play this style of music, but it's difficult to learn by myself. I can't even describe how special it was for me to play with these extremely talented musicians and get inspired by their skills. So we played in Strasbourg for some time, enjoying the city and playing music at any opportunity. This is the Europe that I dreamed about, a Europe filled with ancient beauty and acoustic music, a Europe filled with the dreams of generations refined and perfected into elegance and charm. I haven't always found that sort of Europe, but here it felt like I had finally stumbled into it. And so after staying far longer than we anticipated, we eventually had to pull away from the dock to continue our voyage, but only after promising that one day we'd be back. Thank you so much to all of you for watching, and an extra big thank you to our patrons for continuing to make these episodes possible. An extra extra thank you to these folks who really go above and beyond to make sure these episodes keep being produced, and we'll see you all next Friday. <laughs>